Thank you, Mr. President, for giving me the chance to amplify the, 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 the voice of the Syrian people. This is the first time since I left Syria I faced the people who supported the regime in killing my father, in killing my oldest brother, in killing my youngest brother, in killing my childhood friends. When the soldiers came home to kill my family, my mom heard one of them speaking Farsi. He was an Iranian officer sent to kill our hope, our hope for democracy. That's when the people of Syria realized that we have more than one enemy and we need more than one friend. I stand before you today holding 14 messages sent to you, members of the Security Council, from 14 Syrians representing all of Syrians, all of Syria's governors, 14. Each wants to tell you the following. Rama from Dara Governorate says to you, you have the power to turn our nightmare into a dream. So please do it. Ali from Damascus says, isn't it surprising how powerful you are, but how powerlessly you act in the face of our enemy? Well, Sarah from Homs says to you, my daughter is severely sick. Can any of you help fly her out to any safe hospital anywhere in the world? And you have Yasser from Hama, and he says, I lost everything on your watch. And you just like to blame things on other members. You blame it on Russia just to push the responsibility away from you. Hiba from Latakia says, Syria has never been scarier than now. Even the supporters of the regime are being arrested by the regime and tortured and killed. Just so you know, I am not going to filter the voices of the Syrian people. I'm telling you exactly what they say. And here it comes. Karim from Idlib says to you, you have been acting so lame since 2011. I lost everything I ever loved. I lost everything I have. And he tells you, fuck you for not being useful, for not being respectful to human lives and human rights. You have Sana from Aleppo, and she says to you, all we need is protection. I am tired of being afraid from the sky. I don't want it to drop more bombs. Shiro from Hasaka says to you, don't let Russia and China and Iran play you. Act like you understand your position of power. You sitting in the Security Council, not in a carousel in Disneyland. What Ranim from De Reef Dimashk says to you, I am claustrophobic. Whenever they bomb, I have to go and hide in the basement or in a tiny room, and I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I just want this to end. Shadi from Qunaitra says, I recently, and he's a very young person, I recently tamed a cat, and she is right now in this conflict, my world. So please help me keep her safe, keep her alive. Her name is Judy. Maryam from Asueda. It always seems impossible until it's done. I know she stole the quote. We have Khalid from Raqqa, and he says to you, while you may think that the war in Syria ended, it did not. People are still being targeted. People are still being killed. Lubna from Deir Zor says, there's only one way. There's only one way to end the war in Syria, and that's bringing Assad regime to justice. The last message, the four, number 14, is from Tartus, my hometown. So I wrote this message. Since the start of the Syrian uprising in March 2011, Russia has vetoed more than 15 UN Security Council resolutions concerning the conflict in Syria. Among other things, this resolution covered the human rights violations, the use of force against civilians, toxic chemical weapons, and calls for meaningful ceasefire. Russia did that 
To provide political cover for the Syrian regime and to protect Moscow's strategic interest and arms deals with the Syrian state. So my question is, what is wrong with you? Don't you have any sort of humanity that you shut it all entirely? How do you sleep at night? How do you look your kids in the eyes? And don't you dare to give me anything about the sovereignty of the Syrian regime. This is just too lame argument by now. The Iranian regime and the Iran-backed militias did not get enough from killing the brilliant minds of Iraq, like Ihab al-Wazni or um, Hisham al-Hashimi, who were key leaders of the opposition to the Iran brutal regime. Killing them was not enough, so they crossed the border and they came to Syria and they slaughtered raped, and they burned both human animals and trees. And if you want proof of that, go check atrocitiestracker.org, a project of the Syrian Emergency Task Force that sheds, that sheds a light on the evidence and the testimonies of the families and victims of Iran and Syria and Russia in Syria. And in Iraq. Early this year, a member of this council welcomed the Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad into their home, the United Arab Emirates. Don't you have any respect for the people who've been suffering for years, for everyone who died under torture in Syria, for every mother who lost her kid? Don't you have any respect for those people? Normalizing Assad is a crime. Tourists and travelers from around the world must know of your support to the killing of children and women in Syria. We will make sure, I will make sure, they will find out and understand how completely devoid of morals the leadership of Emirates is. And when the people know, where will you hide? Behind Burj Khalifa? It won't be as tall, it won't be as big as your shame. So shame on you. Shame on you and shame on Jordanian, on Jordan the country that does not allow the pregnant women of the Rukban camp to go to a safe hospital in Jordan to give birth to a life. Shame on you both. You are insulting the great people of the United Arab Emirates and Jordan. The United States. Recently, your government has been very limited to empty statements, no actions. You are supposed to be the leader of the democratic world. I don't even see you in this global arena anymore. You will never be able to protect your democracy, to protect the rights of your women and your school, children in school if you ignore human rights elsewhere. It's all connected. I used, a lot of people used to think of America as the greatest country in the world. Now we actually need proof of that. And there are other members. We have Brazil, Mexico, Ireland. We have Gabon, Kenya, Ghana, that we actually don't see a clear stand. And you have to take a clear stand against dictatorship to support the people that need your help. It's time now to stand in solidarity with the people of Syria who are fighting for freedom and dignity. Turkey and Lebanon has been very generous in welcoming so many refugees. For that, we are no doubt very grateful. However, the Syrian, the Syrian people at this moment are facing a lot of discrimination, a lot of racism, and a lot of insult on a daily basis. And we want to encourage, we want to ask the Turkish government, we want to ask the Lebanese government and every government where there are Syrian refugees to actually be more responsible to honor those who seek refuge in your home. The people of Syria will remember the ones who did them good and the ones who did them bad. As I testify before you today, there are millions, millions, that's millions of people that depend on humanitarian aid in Northwest and Northeast Syria. These innocent people are held hostage, hostage to Russia, Russia that keeps hold hostage all the cross-border points, including Babel Hawa. The reason I, the reason I've been shaming you for the last five minutes it's because I know that you have some power to do so much, but you choose not to. 
here are three actions that you can do to both prove to your own citizens that you care about human rights and to mitigate the suffering of the Syrian people. First, pressure Russia as much as you can to extend Babel Hawa and open all the other cross-border points to allow humanitarian aid. This technically should not be a negotiation. It's humanitarian aid we're talking about. Second, follow Germany's lead to use massive amounts of evidence to prosecute the Syrian regime and its allies. This step can help to slow down or prevent the normalization of the regime that is still insulting you on a daily basis by committing crimes against humanity and war crimes. Third, and this is perhaps the most difficult, but the most important thing to do, fight with us. The Syrian people fight with, with us to free every mother, every father, every brother, every sister, every neighbor, every friend who is being captive for simply taking to the street demanding their rights and asking for accountability and justice. لكل سوري لكل ناجي لكل ضحية لكل مهجر لكل أرملي لكل يت... To all Syrians, widows and widowers, to everyone and to all Syrians who aspire to see freedom, freedom will come.